So today we're going to be doing a cloudy landscape where we're using a very limited palette where I'm mostly going to be using um, cobalt blue, sap green, Payne's gray, and then a couple other colors I'll talk about. So the very first thing we want to do is we're going to be drawing in a horizon line. So your horizon line you want to have lower than the middle of your paper, just because this painting, we're mostly emphasizing the sky, having more room, and then having a simpler kind of strip of land. So you can use a ruler, or what I'm gonna go ahead and do is very lightly, I'm gonna use a pencil and my watercolor paper. And I'm gonna go ahead and very lightly just draw in a I have my horizon line drawn. I'm gonna go ahead and start prepping um, my sky colors. So if you don't have cobalt blue, you can always mix ultramarine blue and phthalo blue together. But I really like my cobalt blue and I want it to be very saturated. So that means I want a lot of paint um, and not very much water just so I can get it really nice and deep. If I need it to be even deeper, I could always add a teeny tiny bit of phthalo blue. And then I'm also gonna make a puddle of gray. Now this could be Payne's gray, which is a really nice gray, and then I could tone it down with a little burnt sienna. But if you don't have Payne's gray, you could always just use like an ultramarine blue. So, and then once I have these puddles, what I'm going to do is wet on wet. Because when you look at clouds in the sky, a lot of times they have some areas where they're really wispy and kind of faded into the sky, and then other areas where they're a little sharper. So that's why I like the wet on wet technique. And what that means is I'm going to take a wet brush. I'm using like a number 16. Uh, depending on the size of your paper, depends how large you may want to go with your clouds and you know, all that stuff. So I'm gonna take water and I'm not dunking directly from my water bucket. What I'm doing is going from here, then dragging a little bit so it's wet, but not soaking wet. And then I'm going to use water and start at the bottom of my sky so then it'll naturally just be a little bit wetter. And then as I go up, I'm going to slowly run out of water. Now, if it gets really scratchy and there's like barely any water up top, you can always just add a little bit up there. And then while it's wet, what you wanna do is grab a nice dollop of your blue and I'm going to be painting the negative of my cloud. So that means that basically I'm painting the blue, not the white. So I'm not overly planning where my clouds are gonna go. I'm trying to just kind of find them as I'm painting. So kind of just doing like little big spots of blue. Oh look, this kind of looks like a cloud. So I'm gonna run with that, do some more blue under it. And then as you go down, your clouds should start getting, um, not necessarily bigger, but they should start getting a little more streaky um, and smaller, but more clustered together. So you'll have less blue down here. So sometimes I'll start even going side to side like that. If your paper starts drying, I could always go back and add a little more red I mean, a little more water. I don't know why I said red. Mm -hmm. All right, now I kind of have some clouds plotted out. So then while it's wet, I'm gonna take a little gray and I'm going to drop in gray inside my clouds. Now the shadows in your clouds are basically going to be like miniature versions of your clouds. So you don't wanna take the gray and just outline and leave it like that because that doesn't really look three-dimensional like a real cloud. So most of the time you wanna go and drop like that and just leave a little sliver of white. 
Now, if you put too much blue or you messed up on your gray, you can always take a white, a wet Kleenex or a wet paper towel and just lift it up a little bit. Ta-da! So, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add gray to all my clouds and that'll be the first step. And you just kind of want to let it dry. If you want to add another layer of blue, I would recommend probably waiting until it dries because you can always go back and add more. Now, while I'm letting my sky dry a little bit, I'm going to start making some puddles of green. So, I'm going to go ahead and make a puddle of sap green. Now, my sap green by itself is a pretty vibrant green, um, but I want it to be a little bit toned down so it feels a little more natural. So, I'm going to use a tiny bit of cad red just to tone it down a little bit. Now, if you end up adding too much cad red and it turns to brown, I can always go backwards and then add a little ultramarine blue back to it. And then for a darker green, I'm going to do my sap green and Payne's gray. So, but if you have a different green to use, like Holbin has a color called shadow green. That's a great color. Or over here is undersea green. And undersea green is a very pretty deep kind of olive green, um, which is great for trees. Versus sap green with Payne's gray is a great dark, but you can see it's a little more bluish. Versus the undersea green has a bit more yellow and brown to it. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up those nice puddles and then we'll talk about how we're going to apply it to right. our lid. So now that I have my greens mixed, what I'm going to go ahead and do is take my sap green mixture um, that's very, very light. And basically what I'm going to do is go ahead and paint my entire land area with this color. And sometimes it's kind of fun to leave some rough paper just for texture. Um, that's more of preference, you know, kind of artistic style almost. And then while it's wet, I'm going to streak in some of my darker greens. Now I don't want to cover over all the layers I just did. So you want to try and stick it mainly like how dark it is at the bottom where the land is closer to us. And then we'll wait for it to dry a little bit before we start doing um, any of the darks that are near the trees. And then one more step I'll do while this is wet is I'm gonna take my sap green mixture and I can make kind of the far away tree line because we want that to be very light um, and a little bit more atmospheric because you have what's called atmospheric perspective where it's gonna be a little blurrier and lighter farther away. So I'm going to go ahead and just tap some of that in. It's not going to be super opaque and then we're going to let that layer dry. So next, now this is probably a tiny bit drier but it may still be a little wet to the touch. Um, what we want to start doing next is establishing our bigger trees because um, we want to try and block those in before we get our back trees to be too terribly dark. So what I'm going to now use is my sap green with Payne's gray, but with more water. And I wanna have some trees that are farther away in the land and some that are closer in. So the ones that are closer are gonna be a little bit bigger. Ones that are farther are gonna be smaller. So what I wanna do is just kind of tap in the shape. And most of the time they're gonna be kind of like a little blob and then you make them more like a tree just by kind of tapping little dots, which are kind of like the little leaves that come off of that. And then while it's wet, I can drop in a little straight sap green 
or even some shadow green, just depending what color you have, because I want those to be nice and dark. So, and I'll go ahead and do that for all my little trees. So you're pretty concentrated. Yes, this is pretty concentrated. I probably could have gone a little lighter on that one. <laughs> Um, so, and then these ones, I'm going to have a little bit lower because I'm going to have them a little bit closer to the viewer. And these are kind of like just bunches of trees, um, less individual trees, except for that one. And that is going to be the sap green and the cane shrub. Yes, but more watered down. So then while it's wet, I'm going to take my pans gray or darker green and just tap in a little bit while it's wet. Now, if yours is very, very wet, you could always wait a little longer before dropping in the shadow or even do it on another layer. And then I'm also going to do some little trees that are a little farther back, like back here. Yeah, they'll be kind of like shrubs until we add the trunks to them. And the trunks will add afterwards. So, and then with that same color, because I need to let my trees dry a little bit, I can also start going a little bit darker down in the foreground, like down here. I'm gonna start kind of streaking it in a little bit while it's dry. And then once it's dry, dry, then we're going to come back and start adding some more shadows on these trees and adding some trunks. Next, what I can go ahead and do is actually add some trunks to my trees. Now the trunks, we're not really able to see a lot of detail in them. They're pretty dark also. So I could even just use my Payne's Gray and just paint in some little lines underneath each of the trees. Now, some of the trees are kind of like clustered together, so you may not see like individual trunks. It may be like a couple trunks and a space, a couple trunks and a space. And you just wanna make sure the ones that are closer, you know, their trunks are a little farther down. So I'm gonna pull this one down. This one's gonna be far away. And I can also use that same color to put in a little bit of a shadow underneath my trees. And then what you want to do is water down some of your darker greens and we want to just add another layer to our greens that are in the far background. Um, I don't want to like make them as dark as the trees in the front, but they need just a little more depth to them. So I just have a little more watered down green and I'm just tapping another layer. Or, you know what else would not be good? Hmm. Is if you could do a little bit of dry brushing. Ooh, yeah, That's dry brushing is good too. I was dry brushing with your green. So you're using a teeny tiny brush this time. Yes, teeny tiny brush. And you're just adding oop. Yep. Oomph. And then once this dries, I could do some dry brushing. Um, the, you could put some little fence posts in there, but again, you probably want it to be fairly dry. Oh. 